Oh, hey guys. Uh, how are things going? Well, the loom is in rough shape. But I'm trying to figure out a retrofit device to handle all those new branches. Oh, you got it covered. Uh, Obi, could I get you to take a look at this temp pad? Let me see. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I can definitely get into it. Do you think this is a higher priority than preventing a temporal meltdown? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I stay focused on the temporal meltdown. I agree. Seems prudent. Okay. Everything you need to know about this, I wrote about it in here. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about Loki Season 2, Episode 2, entitled Breaking Bad. So, Brad. 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 Breaking Brad. You said bad. You said bad. I said bad. You said bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody says bad. And then it's just Breaking Brad. Breaking Brad. Brad check. Lee. We should just say Brad Lee. Breaking check, Brad Lee. Check out the big brains on Brad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it, obviously to let you guys know, if you haven't watched the episode, please stop the episode, uh, this podcast now, go watch it, come back. Or if not, if you like to be spoiled, stay here and listen to what we have to say about the, uh, the episode. So with that, we'll, we'll continue on, uh, with the coverage of Le- Loki season two, episode two, breaking Brad. <laughs> so, uh, the synopsis, Steve, what is it? With the TVA on the verge of temporal meltdown, Loki and Mobius will stop at nothing to find Sylvie. Which pretty much is the mission statement for the season anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm excited to talk about this one because it's it's it was it's really good. It's the second episode, and I honestly, you know, like this second season for me anyway, so far, and I only two episodes in one third of the way in but it's mm-hmm. it's i see it better as the first season because we have you know we have mobius and loki they're established as yes. what their characters are we have the buddy cop kind of relationship there we have this is lethal weapon two. yeah literally right? i i had that in my notes it's like it's Riggs and murtaugh yeah yeah <laughs> this is this is the, the the lethal weapon two this is okay we've gotten past the growing pains we've gotten past the disagreements the disillusionments we've gotten past all that to where we're at the core of what this relationship, this friendship, this yeah. partnership is going to be. And I'm excited to see what the rest of the season is going to give us with that. Cause it's really, it doesn't look like it's playing out to, to stop. No, no, it, it just keeps going when it comes to uh, what they have to go through uh, to get to Sylvie, figuring out all the, all the stuff that's going on within the TVA after mm-hmm. hero remains has been dispatched. And apparently other things are happening w- within the TVA that we're, we're just finding out like Mobius and Loki are, yeah. but we also get that buddy cop. Like you said, it's, it's lethal weapon two, And you can see there's true caring between both characters. You know, the, the way that Mobius cares about Loki and Loki caring about Mobius. So I, I really enjoy that aspect. I love their just their relationship and and how Tom Hiddleston and uh, what was it Owen, Owen Wilson? Wilson Owen Wilson yeah yeah, yeah. yeah how they uh, work together and well, it, it just seems to mesh well yeah and and what occurred to me in this third watch was the, the, it's the things we see off screen it's the things we see happen wait how do I say this because we're not seeing them it's the things <laughs> that happen off screen that I think make it even more cool because it, I, I'm just going to jump into it because got. We're going right into a conversation when they're oh, when they're talking over the key lime pie, which I just sorry, listeners, if you like key lime pie, bleh. anyway, I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, but that key lime pie looked black. It was is that what it key was lime super pie is? green? <laughs> is it supposed to look like that? Like it's not like it it's doesn't usually seem... a light green, not that okay. green green. Yeah. Okay. Not okay. Super fine. Yeah. But anyway, there's that, there's that moment at the end of that scene mm-hmm. where, when, when uh, Mobius looks at him and says, well, you're the God of mischief. And Loki kind of looks back at him and goes and kind of tilts his head kind of, and you get this idea that there's a plan forming that we're not being told 
Like, uh, until you watch it multiple times, I don't think you would actually see the subtlety of it to realize that there's a plan that is about to be hatched that they're <laughs> going to figure out right here over their plate of key lime pie. And they're going to go act it out in front of Bradley Wolf. Is that his name? Bradley Wolf? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. Brad. Uh, well, it's X15, right? right. It's, X, it's X, X5. 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 Yeah. X5. Uh, no, yeah. Hunter, Hunter B, uh, X B15. B15. I got him mixed is up. Is the woman. Yeah. And then Hunter yeah. X5. It's Bradley something. Yeah. Whatever. It is Wolf. Okay. Wolf. So it's Bradley, Bradley Wolf. But you get the, it just, it's one of those, like I said, it wasn't until I watched it for the third time, just, re, just a, a couple hours ago yeah. that I went, Oh, they put this whole plan together over their pie. Yeah. This, and, and it, they play so well with each other to the point of where, you know, uh, they're, they're playing off from what Brad has given them earlier in the interview in that he calls Mobius. Oh, you're a great actor, Mobius. (laughs) <laughs> in that you're you're faking that you're going to let me go. And then later Loki's like, well, Brad, I, I want to believe you, but you're such a good actor <laughs> that I can't believe you're telling the truth. <laughs> you know, and then when it's revealed that this whole thing was was their plan together, and Brad is like, What you two, you know, no, this couldn't have been. And they're like, Oh yeah, we did it. You know, it was just yeah. <laughs> it was just brilliant to me. It was it was such a subtle. Uh, just from the from the acting, the acting verbally to the facial expressions to the the reactions of Mobius when he's outside of the chamber and he's just exasperated at like, yeah, oh, Loki, no, you can't be doing this, you know, to the to the point where Brad like believes it to their to when he's in that little box and he thinks he's going to get, you know, killed. Yeah. Uh, and he finally goes, OK, OK, I'll tell you. And <laughs> he's like. But I, I, I don't have to take you there. And Loki's like, oh, no, no, you're going to take us there. And that's a whole nother <laughs> that's a whole nother part of the episode that I want to get into later. The fact yeah. that Brad doesn't want to go there. Yeah. And it, it's so it, it, I, I just love that whole dynamic and that good cop, bad cop mm-hmm. routine that they had whole planned out. As it, as it's going through, you're thinking Loki's going back to his uh, God days of being evil we kind of get a glimpse of that in the very beginning, too. And mm-hmm. we get a little bit of the old Loki in the very beginning when they're hunting Brad in 1977, London, UK, for his movie premiere of what was it called? Zaniac. 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 Yeah. All right. And it's pretty funny about that because here's a little bit of an Easter egg from the comics re- regarding the movie and the name and the title, as well as the like the name bradley wolf so uh here's something that i i researched so hunter x05 or x5 becomes a celebrity named brad wolf to star in the movie called zaniac which is a nod to an obscure marvel villain who's popped up during a thor storyline in the comics in the early 1980s oh wow so in that storyline zaniac was actually a swarm of demonic parasites from the dark dimension that's where the big bad from the first Doctor Strange movie was from, if you remember okay. that. So okay. uh, who possessed the movie star Brad Wolf. So in the comic, that's who it was. Uh, Brad Wolf gets possessed. Wow. By... So they've kind of modified it for this. Correct. For this so story. they kind of twisted it. We're never going to yeah. see that character. So the, the kicker is that Wolf was played by a slasher villain named Zaniac when it happened. And that's where the Parasite Swarm got its silly name. So they yeah. just literally took references and parts of this to to make it work, which is pretty cool. I like that. That's super cool. Yeah. Especially as he says, he's like, it's not it's not horror. It's uh, what do you call it? Horror. Um, uh, I know he called it cinema, but he had a, a word for it that I'm I'm is escaping me now. He said it's, it's like horror something. Uh, yeah, but- it was like some like. It was kind of like James Bondish. Elevated, yeah. He's like horror. It's horror elevated or something like that. It's yeah. cinema, man. It's cinema, and I'm not getting you tickets. <laughs> right. No, you can't have free tickets. I'm like, but but that uh, that interaction with Loki, Brad, and Mobius, especially outside the theater, he surrounds him with duplicates of himself, but the shadows have the horns on him, just like classic Loki. I love that. And you get the Avengers. Well, his theme from the Avengers when he was Dark Loki. 
Mm -hmm. in that too so the music is there you feel it and you know it so you're thinking in the back of your head oh is he gonna go total dark but we we also know that loki is able to use his powers outside of the tva yeah so we get to see that so he gets get gets to play like he normally does when he's outside of the tv line that line where brad says fight fair and and fight fair don't use magic and then loki's like it's not a fair fight i thought was great (laughs) it's true and then and then mobius being like do we really need the shadow puppets and he's like i thought it was just just the right level of you know yeah (laughs) just enough right yeah yeah oh what i liked about the episode too is we get to see a lot more of ob yeah. And I just love how they're fleshing out the characters that we need to see. So with even with Hunter B15, mm-hmm. we we get more of her. We see get to see more of her as a person. And the the whole point with Brad, what he was looking to do, X5 was looking to get a life. He literally yeah. said, I'm here, I doing exactly what you said. And I did this, but he stole a, a temporal, a temp pad, mm-hmm. temporal pad, and he modded, modded it too. So there's some weird, strange designs and modifications on it, which is so strange. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, ex- I'm excited to hear, to see if we're going to find out more about that because I was a little, so this was my, this was my, um, one of my thoughts as it, as it pertained to Brad was, mm-hmm. so I think it's, it's pretty simple, really the reason he's on the sacred timeline is that I think he stepped into the Brad from the sacred timeline, you know, because we're, we're aware that all of the TVA agents are variants from branch timelines. So he had to have, that means he would have had to have stepped into the Brad Wolf of the sacred timeline. Okay. To take over his, his life. Right. And, and follow his career. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, but I think the reason why he did that, and this is where I go back to what I said at the beginning, why it, why he kept saying, no, let's go back to the TVA or let, bring, take me back to the sacred timeline is because he knew what Docs was going to do. He knew that Docs was going to destroy all of these branched timelines so that the only thing that remained was the sacred timeline. So he right. had to be on the sacred timeline in order to survive. And that's why he was so insistent when they were on that branched timeline, you know, searching for Sylvie Brock in Broxton, Oklahoma, um, which listeners, I still didn't look up. I don't care enough to look up um, <laughs> whether it's a real place or not. Um, but like he knew that that branch timeline could possibly get pruned. And he's like, we're all going to die. Orange shirt is going to die. This is you know this. The, and that's when Sylvie touches him and Sylvie realizes and she sees the whole plan. She touches him just for a second and she gets the whole plan. She's like, oh, they're going to prune all of the branch timelines. Yep. They're going to they're going to get rid of all of them. That way, the only thing that's left is the sacred timeline. And that's yes. why Brad wanted to keep going back. Kept saying, no, take me back to the TVA, which is outside of time, or take me back to my place in the sacred timeline so that I can be safe Home and yeah. safe. Yeah. Whereas with Sylvie, she's in a branch timeline. So, and she's in one of the, she happens to be in one of the timeline, one of the branch timelines that survives yes. the pruning of, of docs. Cause it was a little, okay. I, I get it. <laughs> Let's, you know, for story purposes, her, her branch timeline needs to survive so that she can go back to it. But, yeah. you know, they, they, they make this, there's this comment towards the end where they said 30% which seems like a small number mm. when you look at 100% of branch timelines. But even so, it's still people. That's still, no, it's a lot. And don't get me wrong, it's a lot of, bran- of, of timelines. But it also leaves a lot of timelines, branch timelines still out there. So it, it, it leads you to wonder, like when OB is making this device that's going to allow the, uh, the temporal loom to maintain all of the branched timelines you know, what was there a specific number that he was he knew that okay, I can I can give it a booster kind of to to handle this many branch timelines. So are, are we gonna see a thing when we get towards the end? And I might be overthinking it, that we get towards the end, are we gonna see a thing where they're gonna be like, oh, well, you know, X amount of timelines were pruned, 
but there's mm. still too many for the temporal loom to maintain. So we're still going to have to prune some. I, I, I wonder if that's going to happen. If something like that is going to happen to where they're going to have to find timelines to branch timelines to prune. I don't know. I might be overthinking it. There's another point that I'm going to be overthinking later as well. So mm. <laughs> I, I just love the nods to the, the locations and in, in the episode itself, you know, the mm-hmm. automat that they go to, which is something that kind of dissolved in the seventies and the eighties. You used to see them in New York city. It used to be a, a whole thing where you just walk into a building and they would have these things where you mm-hmm. self-serve with these little doors where you get your food. Yeah. And I just love that, that look, the way it looked, cause it is so retro for its yeah. time. Yeah. And, and they goes are back dressed that. like that too. If you look at Mobius and Loki and how they're dressed. Well, yeah, it goes back to that whole thing of we've talked about is the, of the TDA being kind of stuck in a, a technological time you know, time stoppage. Yeah, it still has where, all the you know those switches, knobs, mm-hmm. everything. Very Gigantic similar. Screens. Yeah, yeah, just like similar with the the Umbrella Academy. Mm-hmm. What we talked about the the people who were in charge at that time, right? Uh, and that stuff because they have it. It's very similar in that. I, I uh, it's similar. Uh, makes me think. Was it a blatant ripoff of it, or was it just something that it just works? So they just all do it now. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I mean, I think I don't know necessarily a blatant revolt, but I think it's it's definitely a, a a nod to the fact that we had to we had to give this a look that could be technological enough to handle what they're doing, but not so futuristic that if we watch it, you know, twenty years from now, people are going to go, "Oh, that's just like like right now when we watch the if you go back to the Star Trek original series." Yeah. Right. And you see those ships. Well, those ships that were dressed out in the 60s and the 70s, when they updated the series and they went back to that same supposed time period, they didn't hold on to those set pieces. They updated the set pieces to make them look more modern. And it's like this this show is saying, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to make our set pieces look more modern just because they should be since it's being viewed in 2023. Mm. Does that make sense? Does that, does that, you know, and it's, it's been a complaint about the star Trek series is since T really since T I think since TNG came out, you know, next generation. Yeah. The next generation. I'm sorry. Since the next generation came out, it's, it's had the same kind of thing is that they've updated the look of the ships, the uniforms, all of these things to match kind of, the time period that it's being filmed in. Yeah. Instead yeah, like of with enterprise when that came out too, mm-hmm. because enterprise looked so far futuristic in comparison right. to the actual sixties original right. series. And it was yeah. actually before it was actually before enterprise yeah. was actually before <laughs> the original series. So you get what I'm saying Yeah, is that they, I, it's, these are valid complaints from the audience, but they're also things that, that they had to do yeah. because new audiences wouldn't have embraced the shows the way they had if they tried to dress them up the way they looked in the 60s and the 70s. Correct. Yeah. You know? it, it, it would look kind of faked and dated. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So yeah. uh, there's a, a scene and I don't know if you got it. It was kind of like a meta joke with uh, Mobius and Loki and Loki was fu- he goes, uh, Mobius, you were clearly f- ahead of me. And Loki just responds this whole thing feels like a meta joke about the endless curved hallway when they were going from the, uh, the automat. Oh, I didn't, I didn't catch it. I mean, I caught the joke that the like, nature of, is saying, yeah, of you're following me. And and he's like, you're clearly ahead of me. I didn't, I didn't catch that as a joke, but I, I get, I see where you're going with that now that, yeah, yeah. that could definitely you know, be a nod to that. What I found here is this, they state the nature of time travel and generally all weird nonlinear aspects of the series. And, likely of Mobius himself, since Mobius strip is an endless curve that folds back Uh on itself. The hallway is Mobius and whoever he's with is always the real driver of the action. He, that he thinks, right. He thinks they're the, they're the person who's in front when, when obviously he's the person who's in front. So yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's kind of cool. I like that. I like that meta. Now I get that. I, I would not have, 
I did not pick up on that. I'll, I'll be honest. So that's, a I good- did not pick. I, something was there in the back of my head. I'm like, there's a, a meta joke there, but I mm-hmm. just couldn't. Somebody had to explain it to me. So when I looked okay. up, I was like, Oh wow. Okay. Okay. That well, is and now it. that you say it. Yeah. It yeah. makes sense. It's, it's really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, it's so funny how OB shows up. They, they show up to see OB. <laughs> Finally, I love this scene. It's basically, it's like we're all gonna die. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> I love this scene where they hand him, you know, they hand him Brad's Tim pad, and they go, they go, can you take a look at this? And he's like, sure, I could dig into this, but do you think this is more important than the temporal meltdown that I'm trying to prevent? And they're like, oh yeah, no, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry about they, that. Don't that that's not as important as the temporal meltdown you're trying to prevent. Nobody's like. That sounds prudent. <laughs> I just, I love his practicality in the way he speaks and the way Kiyu Kwan is playing the character is so wonderful and just makes him so quirky and lovable to the fact that where, where I, I really hope we don't get t- to the end of the season and he ends up being like, I, I really hope they don't do this, but I could see them doing it that he ends up being some kind of villain. No, end. I don't Ooh. think he's the villain. I think he's there to, he was probably working with he who remains, but he was like, I'm just a fixer. I just make yeah. things work. Whereas Miss Minutes, we find out in this was working mm-hmm. with, uh, and she is not to be found right. as well. And she's now working with Renslayer. Renslayer. Right. And it, we find that information out, but mm-hmm. uh, there's going to come time within the next couple episodes. We're going to see Miss Minutes because we've and, seen and- it in the promos. Right. And we know that she, we know that she's working. She works direct. She worked, she works or is working or worked directly with he who remains as well. Cause she was there at the end of time. That's yes. one of the things that's one of the scenes. And this is, we're jumping around so much here, but that's okay. That's fine. Um, every time they showed one of the things I keyed in on, on the previously on was mm-hmm. that, that conversation between docs and it's not X five. It's one of the other hunters where she says, we need to find out what happened at the end of time. And, and that's all they show of that scene. And that goes all the way back to, I, I, that might be the final episode or it might be the first episode of this season. Um, I think it's the first episode of this season where she says, we need to find out what happened at the end of time. And that's where I go into one of my, one of the things that I, that I caught on that had, that I've been, I, I had it in my mind every time I watched it, mm-hmm. but it didn't flesh out until this last moment is that we don't know what happened after Sylvie killed he who remains mm. in, in the end of time between when we see her again, because you know she kills he who remains. Correct. And he says, I'll see you soon. And the next time we see Sylvie is in episode one of this season where mm-hmm. she's coming out of the elevator and she's reaching to Loki asking for help and Loki gets gets pruned and isn't able to help her. Now, here's what I here's what I thought today and what I fleshed out what was had been niggling my mind for a while okay. is and I might be overthinking it, but just because that was Loki's future. Mm hmm. Doesn't mean, and you kind of indicated this last time we talked about episode one, Mm -hmm. whether you knew it or not, (laughs) that was Loki's future, but that may not have been Sylvie's future. Sylvie may have already experienced that moment Mm. at the elevator with Loki. It's just when we saw it in episode one was the first time Loki was seeing it. Correct. Okay. And eventually we're going to find out that Sylvie, that this has already happened to her, that because this is and this is what's been bothering me since episode one is why has Sylvie given up this fight? Why has she decided that, okay, I've made a life for myself in 1982, Oklahoma, and I just want to stay here and I don't care about anything unless he who remains returns and then I'm just going to go kill him again and return back to my life. In 1982, Oklahoma. Um, it's as if she was battling the TVA and he I, who I, remains I, versions mm-hmm. of that. I and think it, she's. And then yeah. she got so tired of the fight when she finds herself in 1982 
in Oklahoma and settling in at this McDonald's, it's like, oh, a breath of fresh air. This is home now. Yeah. And I'm and I'm done. I'm done with the fight. I don't want to fight anymore. Yeah. And like I said, I think I think that elevator scene between her and Loki is her past. Mm-hmm. It's it's Loki's future, present, future. But it's her like she's already experienced it. The Sylvie that we know in when they take Brad to right. McDonald's when they, take, when they take Brad. That's why she has that conversation with Loki, and he right. she he, he's like, well, she's given up, but right. she already experienced like what you stated that uh, when that elevator scene already. Yeah. So so I I think and I might like I said I might be overthinking it, but I think she's already experienced that. And this is some really timey wimey stuff that's yeah. going to take a a bunch to explain over the next four episodes. Yeah, but I'm here. I'm here for the ride. Wibbly wobbly ex- timey wimey yeah. stuff without Doctor Who. But yeah, the funny exactly. thing is, is we've sort of saw seen some of this with the first episode when mm-hmm. when Loki was in and out. Yeah, he was displaced. So exactly, it, was, it basically that was a setup of like, hey, viewers. This is what's going to happen, but not as physically looking that we're doing with Loki right here in this episode. Yeah. So it's prepare like, for a ride. It's like season one, except for except for one moment of season one, when we got Sylvie's perspective of her, you know, from being a child. Yeah. When she was when she was telling Loki the story of her and we got her perspective. Other than that, every perspective we've had of this story has been. Our Loki, Avengers yes. Loki, mm-hmm. is that's the perspective we're seeing it from. So it makes sense that episodes one and two would be from his perspective. So everything in episode one was from his perspective, just like the fact that he's having that conversation with Obi in the past, mm-hmm. and Owen Wilson is having the conversation with him. And in then the he future. gets the information as it's going. Right. So we, he, we start to figure it out as a viewer. That right, way. as a yeah. viewer, that what we're getting is most of this. Most of this is is we're getting Loki's perspective. We're getting some of Mobius's perspective because obviously mm-hmm. that part of the episode was was Mobius's perspective. But but we're getting so it, it's going to be interesting to see going forward how they play with this with this. And again, I go back to the questions I asked, and you had the you had an answer an answer to it mm-hmm. last week. Um, is the pruning who pruned Loki? And mm-hmm. you said you think it's another Loki. It's another version of him who yes. pruned him in episode one. I think you could be right. I want to know who's on the phone. Who's who's on that? Who's calling? There's got they wouldn't just have a ringing telephone there for no reason. Yeah. They're, they're gonna have it. That that telephone has got to be answered by somebody. So, like if if the Loki who pruned Loki is is there, okay, which is a future Loki of the Loki that we know. Now he could be okay. calling himself. It could be a or, very or he could, or he could or let me say, yeah, he could be the one who answers the phone. Oh yeah, or he could be the one who helps Loki out of the uh, who helps helps Sylvie out of the elevator. Correct. It's just it's really it's it comes down to it's another one of those scenes that made me laugh every time. And it's when Brad is is trying to get under their skin, <laughs> and he's telling them, you know, you're all nobody. You're 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 no you're non persons. And he says to Mobius, you're not a person. And he looks at B fifteen. He says she's not a person. And he looks at Loki. And he goes, I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. Okay, yeah. I thought was that that idea that that Loki's to him Loki's not even a person at this point. Yeah. There's been so many variants of him that have been pruned, or and obviously we saw that in the first season. How many how many pruned Lokis did we see at the end of time? There was, oh, yeah. you know, what eight that we know for sure, but we know there was way more out there in that end of time so uh is there going to be an army of loki's at the end of this season there come fight the army of he who remains i don't know I, we don't know there's... and and also i always say that this is influential into what's going on to, into the mcu so we'll get a little snippet of it too at certain points when it comes to the movies it's got to be it's got to it's got to play in you know i don't think like i can't see any connection this will have to the marvels no um, and no. and just because I'm pretty sure the Marvels 
I don't know the order of filming and the order they finished post production, but I think the Marvels was actually probably uh, speculating here. Good. The Marvels was probably finished before Loki season two was finished. Oh yeah, it was um, way done long before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so I don't think anything in Loki season two is going to have to do with the Marvels, but I definitely think you're right. There's going to be things in future phases that are going to be uh, that are coming back to this. Yeah, to it's going to come season. back to this to some degree because you have to realize too with uh, with Secret Wars what they're looking to do with that with that initial comic run and how it is Mm -hmm. it deals with variants it's different timelines of variants of different superheroes so we're going to get various versions of deadpool we're going to get various versions of wolverine uh there there's going to be like a different captain america there's going to be multiple of of versions of everybody so by the time we get to that we're going to see somewhat slightly different versions like that within the MCU and for the shows, especially with Loki, but Loki's the one where it it deals with time specifically because of the TVA. Yeah. As well as maybe Ant-Man, but I don't think it's Ant-Man, but uh, yeah, I, I I just love the, uh, the interactions and where it's going, especially with, with the timey wimey stuff, it, it, mm-hmm. it's, it, it, it grasps your attention and be like, wait, wasn't this? And it makes you want to go back to look at it. Yeah. I yeah. also love, uh, see, like I said it before, I was like looking into like with OB and seeing more of him and him fleshed out more of his character. I love how Casey realizing who OB is and he's just fanning <laughs> fanboy yeah. on, on him too it's like yeah i want an autograph can you it's like you yeah. wrote the tva book oh and plus the fact that you know he uh casey memorized it so i'm thinking yeah. we're gonna get more of casey he seems to I be more so. of a prominent character yeah he's you know he he knew that back door whatever that back door was supposed to be to get the blast doors opened yep and and uh or Brodus was like what you know how you know that and he's like yeah i practically memorized so i think and again, this is the most, uh, this is just speculation. If there's more to OB's character, there's more to his character. Oh yes, just because of the fact that I don't think his memory has ever been reset. He's nope. been he's been down in that basement, but we know that Casey's memory has been reset at least a couple of times. Oh yes, you know. Um, so I, I think there's, there's gotta be some more deeper relationship. OB maybe. knows, OB's going to know everything that's been going on from the very beginning of the yeah. TVA. Cause his time is linear. That's why it's like, that's why I think he's just as powerful as he who remains was Yeah, because mm-hmm. he lived so long. You're talking centuries, probably. Yeah. Probably oh yeah, point. for sure. At least. And, and, and like I said, that's. Yeah, we're right there. We're right there on the same page with Obi. There's there's more to him because, like you said, his time is limited. He knows of the passage of time in the TDA, even though he said, well, that can't happen. It, it wasn't that. And this is what I think was what he meant by that is that he didn't he didn't mean that time doesn't pass in the TDA. He meant that you shouldn't know that time is passing in the TDA. I'm only I'm the only one who's supposed to know that Mm -hmm. time is passing in the TVA, you know, because like I said last week, he came up and said every couple hundred years, I come up here and do diagnostics. Well, in order for him to know that schedule, he would have to, like you just said, live a linear life Mm -hmm. in the TVA. So he has to know uh, how long those years have been. And he just thinks he's the only person there. So when he encounters Loki, who's like, no, I saw you in the past. And OB is like, no, no, you couldn't have seen me in the past. Or when he says, well, no, I'm, I'm seeing you in the future right now. No, no, you can't be seeing me in the future because the future hasn't, for OB, for Ouroboros, the future hasn't happened yet. Yes. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be crazy. I'm, I'm excited for the rest of this season to see where it's going to go and what, what we're going to, uh, what we're going to get from it because, uh, yeah, same here. It just seems, it seems wild and there's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff going on. I'm trying to think if I had anything else. Uh, I didn't. I had a couple that, of quotes, but we don't really need to go um, over quotes because uh, there weren't anything spectacular. I think we kind uh, of, I, I'm trying to. I've I, I covered everything. I said Sylvie, why she doesn't want to go back. Yeah. 
Mobius. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think, I, I think that's everything I've noticed. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. The only thing I, I didn't talk about was like the actual interrogation scene when he was actually using the lawnmower man thing to put him into little spaces. Brad, yeah. At that point, it was a modification yeah. of what he was doing with the temp pad, but it was so funny how he had to turn it on almost like a lawnmower. <laughs> yeah. He had, to, he had to plug it in and plug that hose in. And then like you said, he had to pull the thing. Yeah. It was, it was, it, again, it's that, that whole juxtaposition of old technology with, what should be considered new technology, but it still works. Thing. All right. Well, we did get a little bit of feedback and this comes from our friend, Sydney Seidel, who is from podcast to own Loki cast. So she covers Loki as well on podcast with Alex and Kirk Manley. So this is what uh, Sydney has to say about the previous episode it was oh it's about this one yeah i think, right. I think that's what I'm, I'm looking through i'm looking at it right now i think yeah. it's about this episode yeah yeah it wasn't my favorite episode but i love sylvie and loki's interaction and seeing some new loki powers i think ob is probably more important than i ever thought you're correct sydney i think you, <laughs> you're you're siding with us at this point i i don't know why they were so mad at x5 right off the bat he definitely ended up knowing about Doc's plan to prune it all but other than that he is just being tortured for wanting to have a, a wanting a fun life on his own timeline which is true it's like literally he we said it's like he's looking to get a life uh isn't that what they're fighting for and it's exactly what they're fighting for and she sums up saying allowing people to live their best lives on their timelines. Yeah. Uh, that's literally what it is. Yeah. And I, I agree partially. I think what you try to, to take the other side of it. I think what B 15 and what Mobius and, and them see as they see X five as being kind of a deserter. Yes. Like, of the like TVA of, of so, what so he can of, do. Yeah. yeah uh, yes, they want people to live their own lives. They want people, but they want everybody to be able to be able to live their own lives, not just one person. And so I think what they viewed X5 as as a deserter from their cause yes. to 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 break free from well, the TVA. Yeah, and they're like, like he just it's like him abandoning abandoning his post, his post to do right. exactly what he wanted what they all want to do, but he's like I'm just deserting to do it. Well, mm-hmm. he's not helping them where he can help them if need be, but that's why they dragged him back. So at least with dragging him back in or capturing him, they're able to get that information of where Sylvie is. They right. know all the information about docs uh, and all the pruning of the timelines. Right. And, right. and, and that's, all the people. And, and that's the other part of it, that why they feel once they learn what the plan is and they realize how, how huge his desertion his his abandoning his post meant to all these other timelines. They meant that he was basically acting very selfishly. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I, I think I, not to not to say you're you're wrong, Cindy. I think your your opinion is great, and I totally think yeah. you're, you're you're right. And I, I you've got some great ideas there. And um, but uh, I just think I think there's other sides to this question with X five, and we're gonna there might be some more from him later. Mm-hmm. We'll see. I wouldn't put it past him that we get more of Brad. <laughs> Check out the big brain on Brad. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, uh, just like Sydney, you could submit your feedback as well. Uh, we can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice is. So word of mouth spreads people's awareness of our podcast. And if there's ratings or reviews, which they are, there for spotify and apple Podcasts, i would suggest try using those and if you can uh just fill it out giving a ra- us a rating or review fill out the actual rating if you could type something it'd be a, a greatly appreciated uh five stars as usual but uh just be honest and then uh let us know uh you can find us on facebook so i notify everybody that's how sydney was able to get us the information to us i put an image of what we're covering and then she responded in the comments below so all you have to do is go to facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels podcast or actually no facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels and then you'll see the image of either the episode or whatever and just put it in the comments below it could be an older 
episode if you want. So yeah. just yeah, just put yeah. it in. Uh, you could email us as well at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels two is spelled out T O and pixels and the number one at gmail.com. All you have to do is type out your thoughts. We'll read them on the on the podcast when we get the feedback, just like I did with Sydney's. Or if you want, you can just record your voice and send it as an attachment. Everybody has a, a smart device nowadays. You can do it on an iPad. You can do it on your phone, anything. Yeah. Or even from your computer. A lot of people have been getting into because everybody has these microphones and Zoom meetings and stuff like that. So you could easily do that and just send it as an attachment and we'll play it and we'll respond. Uh, we can be found on YouTube. So all you have to do is search Panels to Pixels podcast and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing or the episode and ring the bell and get notified every time the podcast is up. It's a lot of people like to do that. And you could actually rate or review that as well. And then you could also link it to people on Facebook if you want to select like a suggestion. Uh, we also have an Instagram account as well. I link those Facebook and Instagram together because that's the meta universe out there. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> so when I put it in Facebook, it goes straight to Instagram, but you can follow us at panels to pixels podcast on Instagram. So that's at panels to pixels podcast. So uh, that's the way you could send in your feedback. But uh, right now, uh, where else can we be heard? So Steve, um, well, obviously, I can be heard right here on Panels to Pixels. Um, I'll be here every week talking to Mark about different uh, comics and comic-related uh, things that are brought to the big screen or to the TV. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I send various voicemails to our friends' podcasts out there, so you might hear my voice pop up on uh, uh, anywhere, uh, anywhere, mostly Podcastica. Uh, yeah. Right now, because I'm a little limited, but yeah, podcastica.com and those podcasts on there, there's got some great podcasts for TV shows on there. And uh, my voice will pop up in there every once in a while. Awesome. And you can hear me as well right here on Pounds of the Pixels podcast, as always, as we continue our coverage with Loki season two, as well as Rob and myself, because we decided uh, Steve's like, let's hill to uh, Loki and then me and Rob will do gen v so we might double up there was a new, uh rob had a family thing going on so he couldn't step so we're going to double up on the next episode when it comes out so uh, look forward to that that would be episode three and four so we could play a little catch up that's going on uh we're enjoying that show and it's a yeah it's out of this world you could also find me on adrenaline cinema podcast as well there we cover everything, action, adventure, sci-fi, fantasy, thriller, suspense, basically anything gets your adrenaline going. Recently we recorded, I still have to add it and it'll be up hopefully by the end of the week. Total Recall with our friend, Jason Cabassi, who is oh, nice. the pod father for Podcastica. He created Podcastica and uh, he did a cool plug at the very end to let you guys know where you could find all the Podcastica stuff, his Patreon, everything else. So check Arnold that out. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Total Recall, right? Yes, Not that the, one. We yeah. we talk about the the remake that okay. and what we thought about it, but just <laughs> mentioning it a little. You can also find me on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, and I recently covered uh, the hosting details for Halloween End. So listen to that. Rob was out at the time, so it was just myself, Frank Rodriguez, and Adam Gonzalez. So we talked about Halloween ends and how we could try and fix that. But we also had to talk about Halloween kills because it pertained to that. So it was kind of hard to stay within Rob's dock as it usually is. So we were kind of doing our own thing, but we had a great time doing it. Check me out there. Uh, you could also find me when it comes out on Wilhelm. And Ben actually asked me to uh, be co-host him on his coverage of Monarch, which is coming out on Apple TV Plus, which is the Godzilla TV series that Apple TV Plus is doing with Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell. So I'll be covering that with uh, Ben when that comes out as Very well. Cool. And that's about it. So uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. I'm Mark. I'm Steve. And same...
Bad talk? Different, no. different, different podcast. panel, different podcast, <laughs> different panel, different pixel, same <laughs> podcast. This was Panels to Pixels podcast. We'll see you on the next panel. I yes, got it this time. He got it. I'm kind of mumbly and dumbly because <laughs> I'm a little bit tired. Let's thank you all for listening. We'll take we'll get, catch you guys later. <laughs> Good night. Good night.